Hi, I'm Andrew from Creative Guitar. It's uh, Friday, March 12th, 2010, and I'm just going to hit the uh, email here and find out uh, what I can help a few people out with in terms of questions that I haven't uh, gotten to yet in my general emailing and replies. So uh, let's start off with the first question coming from Liam in England. He wrote in saying, I was wondering how long it took you to get going with your YouTube channel and your websites. You have a lot of information online. Did you learn about video and making websites or do you hire people to do that stuff? I teach guitar and would like to do what you're doing one day. Very curious about how you got started online. So um, yeah, I, I got on the internet uh, just by fluke. It was a student that wanted to build me a website and uh, we traded some lessons essentially for it and it worked out fine. Uh, that was built in a piece of software called FrontPage. And I used that since 1997, uh, but uh, maybe around 2007, I started getting more interested in the uh, internet in terms of just uh, wanting to get out there and start posting uh, video lessons. And um, I uh, hired somebody to start teaching me about uh, software uh, that I was uh, hearing a lot about out there called Dreamweaver. And so um, they also taught me about how to do uh, HTML coding and uh, how to use CSS and style sheets and all that kind of stuff. So it was really good. It was well worth it. I, I took uh, lessons th through that person just privately for about three months. And um, after that, um, I got my uh, main websites online that I wanted. And I just went through this massive learning curve to do with video, trying different pieces of software and really just doing a lot of research on my own. And so that was a huge learning curve. It took a long time. I started doing video lessons just with a webcam, but obviously that's not fantastic. Uh, it's much better to do them with a good camera and some good software. So I finally stumbled across you know, using a, a nice Canon that I picked up as well as uh, using Sony Vegas, uh, a really nice program. So um, yeah, it, it just took a long time and a lot of research. I didn't really hire anybody for that. Uh, but in terms of uh, later, you know, wanting to implement things on my site that were more advanced, like shopping cart systems and secure pages and login access and stuff, I did hire somebody again who was sort of more of a uh, a script, you know, expert of how to do that stuff and how to integrate it with, you know, PayPal's instant payment notification system and so forth. So, anyway, it was a big job to get, you know, started on and get working with, but it, it definitely pays off to to do um, uh, something like hire someone because they save you loads of time. So, uh, anyway, let's go onwards here to the next question. It comes from scroll down the page here a little bit. It comes from John in Atlanta, Georgia. He says here, I watch your videos and find them enjoyable, but most of them are way too complex for me to grasp. Can you suggest how I can learn the basics, like reading tab properly, learning chords and strumming, how to get good at guitar technique? I practice every day, and I'd like to play classic rock good enough to be in a band one day. I don't have the money to take private lessons, though. Uh, any suggestions? Well, um, it's so crucial to be able to be around other people, so even if you can't pay people you know, to be a teacher for you. Maybe you can get around some people that are really good players and you can just hang out and jam and just glean some ideas off of them. Try to you know, shake them down for information because that's a fantastic uh, way to, to learn. It's just the personal you know, one on one stuff with people. Um, another thing though is you know, YouTube is a fanta fantastic resource and just video on the net for teaching is fantastic. You know, I'd pursue that a little bit. I, you know, there's so much stuff out there. You know, it's my channel. There's loads of other channels out there too with good teachers. Um, but also just you know, uh, books. I just actually got an order in uh, this morning. A couple of books I picked up off Amazon. And you know, I, I think for each of the books they were both under 15 bucks and you know, just, just fantastic stuff. So, you know, I'm constantly grabbing books and, and even uh, going to garage sales and picking up old books, too. I have a shelf over here full of just really ancient stuff I picked up that some of it's really old, like from the 60s and stuff. So, you know, it, I, I just always grab information. I mean, it's, I, for me, it never stops. It's not like I went to school, got an education, and then it's just, okay, I'm finished learning. You know, but it's, I'm not like that at all. I really pursue, you know, constantly trying to get better and better and read more and try more things. So certainly, that's what I suggest. Um, just to, you know, pursue knowledge like crazy and, you know, grab stuff uh, anywhere you can, even if it's a garage sales or, you know, a white elephant sales at your local community center or whatever it is. So uh, if you don't have money for a teacher, that's you know pretty much all you can really do. Let's go to the last question here that I got time for. I'm just heading out the door. I got some errands I got to run this afternoon. So let's go and take this one yet and before we wrap up. It's from Tom out in Toronto, Canada. So uh, he says here, I live in Toronto, Canada. Love your YouTube videos, by the way. Thanks for all the effort you put into your online resources. My question is this: uh, What do you know about the musicians' union? Are you a member, and is it good for my career to join? 
I complete music college soon and was wondering about your opinion on the musicians union. Um, you know, I have never been a member of the union. Uh, for some people, it's quite a good thing, but it really depends what you're doing. Um, you know, they have, uh, I, I guess, if you're going over uh, the line, you know, if, if I'm in Canada, so if you're going into the United States or you're going, you know, into Europe to do work, that might be, you know, something that they can help you out with into uh, going into another country, especially if it deals with contracts. If you feel unsure of yourself with what's going on, maybe go to, to your union office and deal with that. But I would, in a blanket sense, I would just have to say, you know, it really depends on what you're doing. Uh, for me, it doesn't really play a role. You know, like they, ha they, they say they have a musician's referral service, but... I mean, you got to think of how many people probably are a member of their union, and then you know, really, what's the chance of them actually referring you? And you know, even when people directly phone me off my websites to do a job, even even then, it's a 50/50 chance that they're really. Yeah, they even say less. You know, like maybe it's a 60/40 chance. You know, in in uh, not in favor either. Like it's more like the 40% side that they'll actually hire me. So it's kind of like you know, overall, I don't know about referral services, like uh, you know that. They also have some type of a, um, a professional musician's uh, insurance plan. So that might be okay for you. I don't know. Uh, it just all depends. It, it Again, you know, how much you're out of the house with your gear and how much of a risk. You know, if you have to replace your guitar and you know you can replace that guitar for 400 bucks, maybe it's just better to not bother having insurance on it if you don't, you know, if you're not too worried about the fact of just going and buying a new one if it gets ripped off while you're in a club or something. But even still, if you've ever dealt with an insurance company, uh, I, they're just, I've dealt with insurance companies with different things, and it's a bloody nightmare overall. So sometimes uh, I would rather just not even have insurance on stuff. It just depends on you know, how expensive your gear was. If you've got $5,000 worth of gear, well, you know, and it's, all, and it's kind of a higher risk situation as you're at with it all the time, or it could get ripped off, well, yeah, you should probably have insurance on it, I guess. Um, if you're touring a lot and you're leaving gear, let's say, in like a U-Haul trailer out at back of a hotel every night, well, yeah, chances are, you know, you could get some stuff ripped off and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you, unions and what they do have a lot to do with an individual person's career and what they're doing to make a living as a musician. So, uh, in the beginning of you just graduating from uh, music college, you may not really need a union. Um, it depends, though, on what your first jobs are when you leave. So, you know, you have to really look at it closely. Contact your union, talk to them on the phone, and find out if it's right for you. I guess that's my best piece of advice uh, for whatever scenario you're involved with in, uh, in making a living out there. So, anyway, uh, that's all the time I have for today. I will be blogging again next week. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.